Hey guys, Ryan House here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna start Season 3 of our Dwarf Fortress Let's Play series. So, boys and girls, I hope you brought your beards, your mining picks, and your Dwarven battle armor, along with plenty of ale for the winter to keep your bellies nice and warm. Now, have no fear, I know that we started this Let's Play yesterday, but we lost the world. Uh, that's very unfortunate. I went ahead and posted a YouTube video though, hopefully informing the majority of you. If you didn't know, now you know. Alright, so, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and create several brand new worlds. We're gonna choose the best of what's available, and then I'll meet you guys over in the embarkation location choosing location. Alright guys, I'm doing a location search on our brand new world, which kind of looks like a giant eight. You know, this, this landmass here looks like a giant eight. And you can see my search on the uh, top right. I went by a six by six dimension area with flux stone, no aquifers, because those inhibit our ability to tunnel down. And rivers, I don't really care, but we do want shallow metals and deep metals. And I know what some of you guys are thinking, but Riot House, that last location was so good, man. It was so, I know it was so good. It was really good. We had hematite all over the place. That place would have been epic. So, it's unfortunate that we lost that world, and I'm very saddened by it. But uh, we have to continue on. We have to. We have to go ahead and continue on. So hold my hand as we journey forth into this brand new world and seek out new adventure and a new civilization to found, okay? So, alright, so we'll wait for this to finish, and then we'll go ahead and find a location. Okay. So I think I found a really good spot. I think this area right here is going to suit us just fine. We have a nice little brook called Low Organs running through the middle of the map. It looks kind of similar to the last location that we had. We have shallow metals, deep metals, and flux stone. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and embark. You have selected a large area. Choose a smaller area if you experience lags. Yes, if your computer doesn't run too well, or it's not uh, incredibly fast, the processor, uh, then you might want to choose a smaller location. I happen to have a pretty fast computer, so we're going to go with a 6x6. Six six. Alright, so let's go ahead and prepare for our journey carefully. We're going to do the exact same thing we did last time. Two miners, two woodcutters, a woodcutter carpenter, and then we'll have a mason. He could also be a, a mechanic, I believe. Yeah, let's find mechanic. There it is. And we'll have him be a building designer as well. Now, I think that gives him the architect skill. And then we're going to have a grower. Let's choose a grower. And he can be a grower brewer. And then the other guy can be a grower cook. All right. And that gives us quite a few points left over. So let's go ahead and see if we can purchase anything else. We have dwarven wine, dwarven beer. Uh, plenty of plump helmet spawn. I'm going to bring you some more of each of these. I think we're just going to pump all these up to 10. So we have plenty of things to plant. And bonobo tribe. I think bonobos are uh, apes. So <laughs> that's pretty That's pretty gross. That's pretty gross, man. Alright. And I think we'll be okay with food. Uh, the buckets carry less of that. I'm only going to take one wheelbarrow. I just noticed that the price for those wheelbarrows are 50 and they're relatively easy to make. And we're going to take some dogs with us. We'll take our cats with us and anything else that would be fun to take with us. I think we're going to start with two horses more than likely uh, that pull our wagon with us so we don't have to buy any of those. Um, I can go ahead and equip us with some armor instead. Let's see here. Let's, uh, either we bring armor or we bring <clears throat> the ingredients to create armor and weapons. So, I don't think we need to do that. I'm, I'm hoping that we have really easy access to, uh, metals on the surface. If not, then, oh well. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna bring, uh, the... Uh, the billy goats again, and the nanny goats, and I think that should do us pretty well. If uh, we start starving, we can kill them, right? And we can eat them, and that should be good. Okay, and that leaves us with quite a few points left. So let's go ahead and add new uh, items. Let's see here. 
There we go. Uh, Warhammers or maces? Wow. Warhammers really don't have a very good cost here. Hmm. Maybe we'll bring spears. Yeah, we'll bring a copper spear and one piece of copper armor, I think. Let's go down to armor. What would that be under? Bodywear. Yeah. We'll bring a copper breastplate. And we'll bring a copper helmet as well. Okay. So headwear, copper, helmets. There we go. And that leaves us with 44 points to go ahead and throw into plump helmets. There we go. Alright, so our fortress name is going to be the Golden Construct. The Golden Construct. Sure, we'll take the Golden Construct. And our embark group is the Galley of Bands. No, no. The Gorge of Releasing. The Standards of Tiring. The Matched Mountain. The Icy Treaties. The Gates of Secreting. Ooh, I like that one. The Gates of Secreting. Alright, so, there we go. Let's go ahead and embark upon a brand new adventure, shall we? You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all Ablel Arbost. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the alligators get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Lemulaban Golden Construct. Strike the Earth! Yes, indeed. All right, so here we are. And what do we have on the surface, my friends? Sphalerite. It has zinc and copper in it. Uh, the ability for us to make bronze as well within our, uh, our reach now. Okay, so that is very good. Anything else? Probably mostly sphalerite and limestone. I think that's limestone. Marble. Okay, so sphalerite and marble. Marble's going to be our main flux stone for this area. Let's head up a couple Z levels. Alright. This mountain goes up pretty high. You can see that there's a lake at the top here. So this might be pretty difficult to defend. If, um, so yeah, we're going to definitely uh, choose the mountain as our home yet again. Okay. So we'll be uh, entombing ourselves in this mountain over here somewhere. One of these locations. I'm thinking, let's see here. Right here would be good. Okay, so this is going to be the entrance to our mountain home. Amber Opal Clusters. Okay. So, let us go ahead and mine out a location here. I'm probably going to stick to the same kind of mining powder that we had in the last, uh, in the last fortress. I think that would be kind of cool. Alright, so have them mine that out. leave ourselves plenty of room okay and then uh, in fact let's give ourselves even a little bit more room why not okay so here is where we're going to place our let's see here here's where we're gonna we're gonna place our trade deep depot right here so let's go ahead and set this up just like last time or thereabouts as close as we can get it. Alright. That looks pretty good. Uh, it's uh, seven on each side, is what we should have.
All right, not too bad. So I'll go ahead and flesh out the rest of this, and then we'll go ahead and kick it off from there. All right, guys, I went ahead and fleshed out what is going to be the interior of our fortress. You can see over here, uh, this area, which kind of looks like a UFO right now, it's actually going to be a large hall, a dwarven hall. Uh, these uh, empty squares are going to be large pillars that reach all the way up to the ceiling of this grand hall. And it's something that we're going to work on a little later in the Let's Play. But for now, I've had the dwarves tasked with mining towards the center. This looks pretty familiar to you guys, with the small exception that we placed the storage above the workshops this time instead of below. And above here as well, right above the trade depot, right here, uh, we're going to be placing the barracks. So the military is going to be very close to where we deal trade uh, with uh, the foreign trade caravans, okay? So we'll have the military readily available. Also, over here you see that I marked some channel locations. That's just to remind me that we're going to be placing drawbridges over there. So Alvi will uh, eventually channel out all that interior right there and over here on this side as well. But I don't want the dwarves to do that just yet. So we have more important things to do like hauling out the center and uh, getting the workshops done, etc. Okay, so that's what we're working on right now. I'm going to go ahead and name our dwarves so we get everybody named and then we'll come right back. Okay guys, so we went ahead and named everybody as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys view these dwarves and see what kind of personalities we have here. You see Saxman, he's 53 years old, muscular, fairly deep, has a fairly deep and raspy voice, hair is quite sparse. She's concerned about rejection and ridicule, doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges. She has a deep well of patience, a great kinesthetic sense, an ability to read emotions fairly well, and good creativity, a good memory, and a good feel for social relationships. She is almost never sick. She's strong, tough, and quick to heal. Wow, Saxman, you have incredibly positive uh, traits. It's awesome. No negative traits whatsoever. Here's the dudeness. Uh, she is weak and very flimsy. You're 72 years old. Uh, you like schist and tin and red barrel, cow hoofs and gems. Uh, you have a great musical sense, a sum of patience and the ability to focus and a good creativity. You often feel discouraged, however, but you are comfortable in social situations. That's good. Very good. So that was the dudeness. Here's myself, uh, 67 years old. I'm almost never sick. I uh, have a sharp intellect, a natural ability with music, a good feel for social relationships, an ability to read emotions fairly well, the ability to focus, and a sum of patience and willpower, but an iffy memory, and occasionally overindulges, indeed. Okay, so here, here is Templar T-Man, 84 years old, he likes Alunite, Electrum, Levin, Opal, Giant Snail Shells, you have a great creativity, an amazing memory, and a lot of willpower and a sum of patience. But you have a meager ability with social relationships. You're slow to anger, doesn't need thrills or risks in life, isn't given to flights of fancy. He loves to defy convention. Very unconventional. Alright, very good. And here is Mighty Nag. He is 53. He is flimsy. He likes obsidian, bismuth bronze, lavender, jade, brown, our giant brown recluse spider silk. Awesome. He also likes swamp whiskey. That's good stuff. He absolutely detests fire snakes. Good to know. He has a great creativity and a very good feel for social relationships. But he has a me meager kinesthetic sense. He occasionally overindulges and loves a good thrill. He isn't given to flights of fancy, however, and he greatly appreciates art and natural beauty. Awesome. Alright, so that's Mighty Nag. Here we have Phoenix. You're 84 years old. You are quick to tire. You have a very good focus. And you have poor empathy, a poor memory, and very clumsy kinesthetic sense. Well, you get what you get. <laughs> She's very self-conscious. You can handle stress. That's good. These are good qualities. She's eager for new experiences, finds helping others rewarding, and lacks confidence. She strives for excellence, often does the first thing that comes to mind. 
And uh, she always takes a deep breath whenever she is surprised. Alright, so there's Phoenix. And last but not least, we have Travis PLO yet again. And here you are, 67 years old, you're rarely sick, you're quick to tire, flimsy and very weak, however. Uh, you like borax and zinc. Uh, here's something interesting, scepters and brutes of tears for their bloated appearance. That's interesting. You like to consume seahorse, prickleberries, prickleberry wine, and yak's milk. And you absolutely detest bats. Alright, you have an iron will and a good intel intellect. Uh, you have poor focus, a shortage of patience, a little difficulty with words, a questionable spatial sense, a meager ability with social relationships, and a poor memory. All of those things are excellent genetic qualities, I'm sure. You are very friendly, and does not have you do not have a great aesthetic sensitivity. You are organized, however. So maybe we'll have you as uh, the the bookkeeper if you're organized. However, your poor memory might not be a good thing. Okay, so that's everybody. Alright, so now that introductions are over, let's get on with the rest of the fortress, shall we? So yeah, most of our wood is located way up here on the mountaintop. Which is unfortunate. How far does the mountain go? This mountain goes really far up. Look at this. All the way up to here. It's amazing. Really large mountains, indeed. Should probably set up hotkeys here. Yeah, but our dwarves are mining steadily. Uh, that sphalerite uh, has copper in it, so that's good. So we'll be able to make bronze, things like that, I believe. So, bronze, indeed. Bronze, or at least copper. At the very least, we can make copper weapons and armor. It's not good as hematite. We won't be, uh, we won't have any uh, iron deposits apparently. It's too bad. But we get what we get. Bronze is pretty hard, so it's pretty hard metal. Should we should be able to work with it pretty easily as well. Inside this. Uh, trade area will set up temporary there's that word again temporary we'll set up temporary stockpiles to bring everything indoors and then maybe we can quickly get the drawbridges up I think the first thing that we're gonna set up well let's see here we should be able to set up a carpenter's workshop right now so let's set up a carpenter's workshop right here uh, we'll set up a carpenter's workshop, we'll get some beds out so the dwarves can sleep, they can lay there. Dwarven heads down to rest. And then we'll bring the food and the drinks inside along with all the other materials so we can destroy the wagon. And uh, then we need to get our drawbridges functional so we can start working on that as well. And what else, what else? Yes, lots and lots and lots of stuff that we need to do, indeed. All right, we're gonna be very busy this let's play. All right, so let's get those dwarves back to work, shall we? Yeah, look at that. So we actually have a waterfall, guys. Oh, this is really cool. We have struck amber opal. Good. But yes, we have a waterfall. Um, here it is. Very pretty. Maybe that's something... Oh, this would be cool to tunnel towards in the future. Uh, have a waterfall like that. I love me some waterfalls. Look at that. That's, that's beautiful. So yeah, we are up pretty high, as you can see. High enough for waterfalls. High elevation. So this is going to be a beautiful place. Beautiful. Who are our miners? Saxman and the Dudeness. You two are the miners. Templar and myself are woodcutters. Mighty Nag, you're the mason. And Phoenix and Travis, or well, Phoenix is a farmer. I'm guessing Travis is a farmer as well, but he is also our expedition leader. 
So he's the one that brought us here and shows this wonderful valley for us to set up our fortress, okay? How could you re how could you resist a location with all this sphalerite just gleaming in the mountain walls like that? It's everywhere. It's awesome. I'm hoping that we hit uh, like hematite a little deeper or lemonite a little deeper. Uh, things that have iron. That would be nice. Okay, so let's make a couple shields. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beds for our seven dwarves. And we can go ahead and actually set up those beds as soon as they're done in here. And we can also probably set up the meeting area. I want them to hollow out just a little bit more so we can set up a little larger meeting area for all the dwarves. And now that this is, I showed you guys these areas, I, I'm going to go ahead and designate them for mining. Like so. Alright, so... Yeah, this is a pretty quick episode. I wanted to get a brand new episode up so you guys all know that we're starting a new fortress here. And then uh, we can continue on with the rest, rest of the Let's Play series. As soon as they're done hollowing out this area here, we're going to set up a meeting hall. Then we're going to go ahead and close this episode and start the next one, okay? So... I'm very excited. Uh, let me know what you guys think so far. There's a lot of stuff happening uh, right now. And if you guys get your input in... Oh, I don't want to channel that. Sorry. If you guys get your input in, the sooner the better. All right. So let's go ahead and remove these ramps outside. Remove all these ramps. That should be good for now. If you guys are interested in getting a dwarf named after you, keep in mind we've already gone over a hundred dwarves on the list, but this fortress is going to have a dwarf cap of 200, so there's still time for you guys to get a dwarf named after you. All you really need to do is uh, post in the comment section down below that you guys want a dwarf named after you. The sooner the better. Uh, keep in mind it is June 29th, so the, the later that you find this video, probably the less likely that you're going to be able to get a dwarf. But it never hurts to go ahead and put your name down uh, down below in the comment section. Okay? So I'll continuously add the dwarf names to the list. You never know if half the fortress might die and we still survive and continue on. And also, we'll probably be doing additional Dwarf Fortress Let's Plays in the future. And I'll go ahead and... Excuse me there, I had hiccups. And I'll go ahead and uh, post uh, another introduction video, giving you guys enough time to go ahead and respond and post your Dwarf names yet again. Okay? So, I like to start nice and fresh every time. Alright, so, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and uh, create a new zone here. And actually, this whole area right here can be our meeting area. So, there you go. Meeting area activated. So, yep. Meeting area activated. I'm going to order the dwarves to go ahead and mine out the rest of this. Alright, guys. I'm Ryan House. Thank you for joining me. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll probably have it up shortly. Until then, take care and happy gaming.